Hi everybody. The code for this walkthrough is on GitHub, so I'll link to that down below. We're talking about rendering static text, that is text that we know ahead of time and we've written it into our program. It's different than taking in keyboard input and then printing that to the screen. So this is text that we know ahead of time. When we talk about rendering it to the screen, what we do is we take the text, we create a surface, and then from the surface we create a texture. And that's like any other texture, like in my other videos I have textures for little spaceships and drones and lasers, things like that. So that's a texture. And then we take our texture and we put it in an SDL rect, which is a little rectangle that we place on the screen and our texture goes into that rectangle and it gets rendered. Now, it's fairly simple to do. It only takes a few steps. The first thing that we have to do though is import the TTF library. And this is how we handle true type font, TTF. And in the init SDL function, you'll find at the bottom, after all the boilerplate up above with creating the renderer and the window, we initialize the TTF library, check for uh, errors, and then we open our font. So the font that I chose is terminal. Of course, you can play with lots of different fonts. And when we open the font, we also specify a font size. I started with uh, 28 pixels, and you'll see later on how we can increase and decrease that on the fly. Once um, initial, we've uh, initialized SDL, just down below before we start the game loop, I then create our text. So this is just a little helper function I wrote to take our C string, which is testing, and then the next C string I do is one, two, three, and we have an optional scale. So I said when we opened our font, we created it at 28 pixels in this example. The scale is a way we can create our rect and make it bigger or smaller to scale the text in an easy way. So we have our C string passed in. We use the TTF function uh, render text solid, and that takes the font, the string that we want to create a surface with, and then the color. So this is a solid white color. It's an SDL color struct with RGB values, and the final one is alpha, 255 being solid, uh, solid white, not see-through at all. We have our surface, and we only need it for a moment to create our texture. So right here, I defer the freeing of that surface so we can free that memory, create our texture. And from there, like I said, it's just like any other texture. So we have to create our rect. We size the rect appropriately according to the size of the, the texture that we created with the font. And there is the optional scaling, so I can you know double it, triple it, whatever I want. If we don't pass in anything, then the scale argument or the scale parameter defaults to one. That's how you do a default parameter in Odin. And then I return a new text struct, a, st a text object. So this text struct is a new one I created just to store the texture and the destination rec. Uh, and I do this a lot in my other videos with the, the game uh, tutorials, for example. So we return that text. And then when we start our game loop, at the very end, this is where we render it. I reach into my texts array. This is where I'm storing the textures. You can see up above here, I key each texture or each text object in the array. I key it by an enum, title and subtitle. That just makes it easier for me to keep track of what sort of text I'm actually storing in that spot. So I just pull them out one at a time. I grab my title. I set my destination to somewhere in the middle of the screen. And then I call render copy. Now to make the, the, the sizes change, I've uh, wired up something in handle events. This is where we take in our keyboard events. And if I is pressed, then we want to increase the font size. If D is pressed, then we can decrease the font size. So I just set the new font size value right there. And I use set font size a function from the TTF library to reset the, the size for the game font that we loaded up when we called open font. We opened it with 28. Well, now we're uh, resetting that value on the font using the set font size. And of course, now that we've done that, I have to recreate the textures because the original textures were created with the font size 28 in mind. I have to recreate them, add them in, overwrite the previous values in the array, and uh, then they'll be available on the next loop to, uh, to use with the new font size. If you're interested in learning more about setting dynamic, like uh, rendering dynamic text, so that is text that comes in through the keyboard events, then check out the next video that I'll link to. It's a, a little bit different, but it's just as easy, I think you'll find. Cheers.